from the user OK Autumn on Reddit. Christmas Jane Doe was a woman with slightly wavy brown and red hair. Described as right, her hair was described as being just below her collarbone. She had pierced ears, and it's possible that she had braces which had been unprofessionally removed because one of her teeth still had a metal bracket on it from braces. She had very crooked front teeth and several fillings. She had no third molars. She was believed to be between 21 and 35, although the coroner estimated her age to be more closer to mid-twenties. Christmas Jane Doe was a woman whose decomposing remains were found in a nearby woods off of Taylor Creek Road. Twenty-two women have been ruled out. Now, she had two clear, clear post stone earrings and one gold-colored ring. She was wearing two bracelets. There are photos of the jewelry. There's photos of the ring. I will share all of that on the um, page. And it, this, she was discovered on December the 29th, 2003. Okay. Okay, I, I see now why she's called Christmas, Jane Doe, because the town was Christmas, Florida. Um, she was estimated to be around 24 to 29 years of age. She was white, 5 foot 3. Her body condition was decomposed. Uh, it's believed that she had been dead for weeks to several months when she was found, and her cause of death is not stated. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it was a murder. I don't know, the, you know, if her remains were found hidden or if she was found um, just, you know, it, it doesn't really go into a lot of detail. And this is also on Unidentified Wiki. And her name is also Christmas Doe. Christmas Doe was the nickname given to a young girl whose decomposed body was found in December of 1988. Um, the victim was found in a suitcase filled with cement that was placed inside of a television console. Her cause of death was not discovered due to the state of her remains. She had curly black hair that was pulled back into ponytails and styled with bows. She was wearing a white knit skirt with a red pony on it and white thermal pajama bottoms and a diaper. She was found in Wire County, Georgia. She was believed to be between two and four, but the fact that she was still wearing a diaper, I would say two to three, probably three or under. Um, she was African American. She was around two foot nine inches tall. She weighed 25 pounds. They believe that she had been dead for about two months when she was found. And her cause of death is undetermined. And... That's, there's several photos of her. There's, uh, you know, composites and computerized, computer-generated drawings of her and the clothing that she was wearing. At approximately 12 o'clock on December the 21st, 1988, a timber truck driver pulled over alongside the road in Millwood in Wire County, Georgia, to relieve himself. In a nearby wooded area, as he walked into the woods, he came upon an isolated garbage dump site where he became curious over an old television cabinet laying on the ground. As he approached the cabinet, he kicked it, which caused it to break open. A black metal suitcase fell out. The suitcase had been wrapped in duct tape and placed within a plastic sheet. And within it and within it was a sight the truck driver would never forget. Someone had filled the suitcase with cement, which encased a gym bag and a brown baby blanket, which themselves hid the body of a young 
child. The exact area where the child's remains were located is off Georgia Route 82 near Duncan Bridge Road. I'm going to put my own little thoughts in here just for a minute. I would almost 100% personally, my own personal thoughts and feelings about this, I, I almost 100% believe that this was a parent or at the very least a grandparent, someone who was very close to this child, knew this child well. Just like the little girl in the box found floating in um, the river in Philadelphia, which was five years after the discovery of the little boy in the box in Philadelphia, that child also had been wrapped in, a, uh, in plastic and in a apron. Now, some people could argue that someone is just going to the length to conceal the identity or the, or of, of hoping that nobody finds these remains. Uh, if, you, if you read about this type of things, these psychological thoughts of people that do things like this, to take the time to wrap up a body and to wrap it in such a way Yes, number one on their list of things is they don't want anybody to find this body. But they also want to take a little bit of care of the body by wrapping it and concealing it. What they're doing is almost protecting the body, protecting it from animals or other things like that. Jane Doe's remains were brought in for examination where it was estimated she had died approximately two months prior to her discovery. This is based on the level of decomposition. The autop autopsy suggested that she had been a healthy child at her time of death and no signs of abuse were noted. Due to the state of her remains, the ca cause of death could not be determined, but there was no signs that she had been beaten or stabbed or shot or anything like that. It is unknown if she was alive when she was placed in the suitcase. Um, no signs of real trauma to her body, but how decomposed was her body? Um, could it be that it was an accident and someone hit her so hard that she broke her neck or that it maybe cracked her skull or something like that? There was no blood that they they didn't talk about there being any blood on her clothing. Um, maybe someone overdosed her. People are, you know, have been known to give children stuff to make them sleep. And is it possible that that's possible what could have happened, that they gave her too much of something for her to sleep and she died in her sleep and they knew that they would be, you know, looked into. I don't know. It's just speculation. It is suspected. Okay, wait a second. The investigation in the case worked alongside with the Georgia Bureau of Investigation and other members of the Sheriff's Department to help find her identity going door to door in the area where she was found. It was suspected by those investigating that she may not have been from that area, as a copy of the Albany Herald newspaper was located near the body. See, this is the exact same thing that happened with the little girl in the box. There was a copy of a newspaper inside the box with her body that was from... Um, that area and it was dated this was the killer or the person hiding the body concealing the body this was their way of letting people know what what her you know time range of her death anyway, um, a copy of the Albany Herald newspaper was located near the body this resulted in a search across the United States for a missing child who met her description, as well as the sheriff's office reaching out to neighboring law enforcement agencies. News stories about the case were broadcast across the country. 
In 2009, a potential link to Albany, New York was uncovered, with some people believing she could have lived in the area before her death. Authorities in Georgia worked with a local television station in that city to put together a broadcast to the public, but their efforts did not result in any leads. In 2010, an anonymous caller left a tip informing them that her name could have been Bridget and that her family may have once lived in Tifton, Georgia. However, not much more has been released. Jane Doe is described as being an African-American child between the ages of three and four. Um, her black curly hair was tied into a ponytail with a brown rubber band and had brightly co colored bows in it. Um, she still had baby teeth. When Jane Doe was, was wearing... When found, Jane Doe was wearing white thermal pajama pants with a maroon-colored trim, a diaper, and a white knit pullover. Police have looked into the idea that she may have been brought to this area from another area. Her ears were pierced, but no earrings were in her ears. Other children that have been ruled out are Kimberly Janice Boyd, who went missing in South Carolina in 1987, and Bonita Sanders, who went missing from New Jersey in 1986. There are other Jane Doe's. Um, Jane Doe's DNA is currently available for comparison. So what they're saying is if there's anybody out there um, who thinks that they may have an idea of who this child could be, if they think it might be somebody who they had a family member that had a child that went missing to, to maybe offer to, to give their DNA and let the police check. So this is from, one more story I'll share about this. This is from the website Medium. Madison Trammell is the author, and it's called The Tragedy of Christmas Doe. While the Christmas season is long over, the slight chill of the spring air reminds us of a time that we share with family and friends. However, this case remains with us just like the cold winter. On December the 21st, 1988, a trucker was hauling lumber when he pulled to the side of the road in Georgia near Duncan Bridge. He stopped by an isolated garbage dump and saw an old TV console covered with a piece of plywood. Out of curiosity, he kicked it and it broke open to reveal a black metal suitcase. This was suspicious to him enough that he contacted the police. Officers arrived on the scene were Detective Herbert Bond and Detective Arnie Heron, Jr. They noticed that the suitcase was wrapped in silver duct tape and a plastic sheet. The suitcase contained a duffel bag, but it was also filled with cement. Inside, they found a little baby wrapped in a, blank, a brown blanket. It was the body of a little girl. It was a baby, a brown baby blanket. See, that takes me back to this being the case of somebody that had, like, somebody kidnapped this child and took her away from her home. The, the possibility of them having access to her baby blankets and things like that are not that great possible if it was a family member that took her, but I personally believe, and I'm not saying this was an accident, it could have been a, a deliberate, you know, they could have beat this child, even though they said they couldn't find any broken bones or anything like that, but that doesn't mean that the child may not have died from a blow to the head, which is what caused the death of the boy in the box. When asked to reflect on this day, Detective Heron said, I can see her now and I wonder what happened to her. 
He describes how the truck driver broke down once the weight of the discovery hit them. Her nickname as Christmas Doe was given to her because she was found just a few days before Christmas. The little girl was African American around age two to three, four, uh, two to four. Jane Doe had black curly hair, etc. It goes on to tell what she was wearing. Um, the detectives couldn't help but notice how well she seemed to have been cared for the lack of dignity with, with which she was dumped. She was disposed of in the trash, but the care she seemed to have been given made detectives believe that someone out there had cared for her. See, this is what I said. When someone kidnaps a child or some angry person that beats on this child and this child is constantly abused, they have no love for them. If they kill them by accident or deliberately, they're going to dispose of that body in a way that they hope that it's all gone. They will either burn it or they will chop it up. They will dispose of it in the river. They will, you know, do something, bury it or whatever to get rid of it as quickly as possible and hopefully as far away from them as possible. Just like the little girl in Philadelphia, someone took the time to wrap this child's body up. They wrapped it up and they duct taped that suitcase. They even laid plywood over top. They nailed this TV console. They nailed the door shut on it. And then they took plywood and laid on top of it and nailed that. Somebody took the time to make this child a makeshift coffin. And that tells me that it was more than likely one of her parents, maybe both. The mother still wanted this child's body to not be eaten by animals and, you know, spread throughout the woods. And maybe even hopefully she had hoped that they would find her, you know. But cement... Um, I don't know. That That is kind of more like a man, you know, to me. I mean, personally. But just like I said, the sheriff believed that this child had been taken care of. Her body had been given a, almost a embalming almost by being wrapped. And, and her one of her own little baby blankets wrapped around her, you know. Given the circumstances, it is likely that foul play was involved, of course. Sadly, no one knew who she was. No one came forward. There were no missing children reported in that area. Leads in this case have been few and far between. Either the police are not sharing anything with the public or there is just a complete lack of information. And it just goes on to tell about how in 2009 and in 2010 they had a couple of tips. DNA ruled out several people who had been missing. There are seven children here who have been who were reported missing. The closest one to this child was in Atlanta, Georgia. She went missing in 1985. She was ruled out. She was three years old at the time that she went missing. So all of these children have been ruled out. You just think about that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven little African American girls between the ages of 10 months and three years of age. Texas, Michigan, Missouri, Illinois, Illinois Georgia, New Jersey, and South Carolina. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. All dates from two, 1982 to 1987. And that's just the ones that they know about. You know? Given Christmas Doe's age and the fact that no one has come forward after all, this, all these years, it is likely that her family was involved. This could mean that she had never been reported missing. 
because people would desperately be looking for her and the Reflecting on the words of the detective, Heron, you couldn't get no better time than now that could really happen. With all the recent advances in DNA, it could just be a matter of time before Christmas Doe has her identity. If her family is truly behind her death, then it is likely that she was never reported missing. Just like the little boy in the box. They found out who his family was, and no one had ever reported having a child missing. Now, keep in mind, this was 1957, and people did come forward and say, I have a child missing. But over the years, they were able to rule that out using DNA. And this year, they finally were able to find a match that turned out to be a sibling of this man, or child, who, you know... The, these people, this boy would have been 69 years old if he had lived. So his siblings who were younger than him are probably in their 60s as well. And the parents are both deceased. So will they ever get to the real true bottom of who killed this child? Who busted his head open with blunt force and beat him so badly that he died? And left him naked in the woods? Will they ever get to the bottom of this one? This case could be solved through DNA or the family coming forward, similar to what happened in the case of Erica Green. Detective Huron working, um, kept working this case into his retirement. His dedication to her case seems almost unparalleled. Sadly, he passed away in September of 2015, while Dale Wiley is still the case agent for the Bureau of Investigation. It is sad to know that a man who was so dedicated to finding her identity is now gone. If you have any information on who this may be, or if you know that a child in your family was, was missing from the family, you're encouraged to give DNA as it may match. But that's all there is on this case, and I just wanted to share this. And I'm going to do another one on another person that is also um, related to Christmas theme. And who knows, when I get ready to do that video, I may come up with more people. Because I'm telling you, we all know about missing people. We all hear it in the news every day. Someone went missing. Maybe within hours or days, their remains are found, maybe weeks. But there are people out there who've been missing. This little boy was probably one of the older known cases. Um, 65 years. I mean, he was, he was found within days of his death. His body was discovered within days. I mean, probably less than a week after he was put in the woods in a box. But it took them 65 years to find out who he was. But I'm going to go on ahead and finish this video now. I just want to say thanks to all of you who have followed my uh, or subscribed to my YouTube channel. I appreciate it. For me personally, it's about bringing a name to these people. You know, bringing a, a story to who they were and... What might have happened to them? We all have that curiosity. Well, you know, just and that's just how that's just how I look at these stories because these were somebody's that we we think about the little boy in the box and we say, well, nobody ever loved that child. Nobody, somebody did love him at some point, at least I hope and pray. But I do know this: the people across this nation and people who have made videos about him, like myself and others out there who have been talking about this story for decades, had love for him and had love for the hope that one day he, he would have a name, and now he does. The people that took care of his grave loved him. It's so sad. And I know it's not a heartfelt subject to be talking about so close to Christmas, but, you know... 
it's Christmas is a time for people to be happy, to spread joy, to help others, to give to others. And maybe possibly this is just our way, myself and others that talk about these types of stories. Maybe this is our way of giving something back, you know, to these people. I don't know. But I appreciate you for watching. I did not mean for this video to be so long. And um, Merry Christmas.